my name is Dr. Gloria Tochuku Okeke. Um, I'm a linguist. I'm interested um, in sound because the basis of every language is the speech sound. It is from the speech sound that you, you can now generate the words, the phrases, and the higher structures like the sentences. We, we, got, we got a link uh, of directing us to some of the, the recordings, recordings from Delta, recordings from Oka. So because our interest was an Oka dialect, we, we listened to, to numerous of them, which were generally not quite audible, uh, but I think that is understandable. So the, from there, we now picked the ones that are better in terms of audibility. So, but still, we couldn't do much with them because the, the, <clears throat> the, the noise in the recordings were just too much. So we couldn't sieve out, even we, it was very noisy. So we went ahead to, to screen and to remove the noise, to reduce the noise to the barest minimum. And after doing that, we were able to hear clearly, at least to an extent, what was recorded. And uh, after we, we selected 10, we selected 10 recordings. And after listening to the 10 that was screened, we, we came down to two. Uh, that is uh, 0407 and 095, 0495. 0407 contained two stories. One, a, a, a narrative, two, two of them are narratives. So, and f the first one uh, sounds like uh, the Igbo folk tale. So, a, a woman was telling how and what the father told them. So, and the other one, that is a 0495, is a, is a recording of uh, lexical works and expressions, yes, uh, works, Igbo works. And uh, it, it, it sounded as if the, the native was pronouncing those words to, to not cut because you, you, you could hear not cut or some other person trying to repeat what she was saying. And uh, you, you can obviously see the difference between the way the woman will pronounce the words and the, how the person will respond. So we now selected the two, the two recordings and um, translate them. We translated them uh, both uh, the uh, um, glossing of the, uh, the expressions, lexical words there, we glossed them and we provided a, a, um, a semantic translation of the stories, um, both in English and uh, Igbo. So after that, we, we did um, a phonetic transcription of the, the expressions we tried to represent the expressions using phonetic symbols. So after, at least, that gave us an idea of what the, the sounds are used in those recordings. So after which, we now went, first of all, before going to, to Oka, we, we sorted out for, Oka dialect speakers within Onsoka. Because, uh, for instance, in, the, in one of the recordings, uh, the, the woman said, Oruru Boshi Anwo, which means that particular day, or you got to, a, to that particular day. Uh, he, he, that, the next thing he said was not so clear to us. So we had to, first of all, look around for an Oka dialect speaker around here who now listened to the recordings with us. And it was that person that told us that what the woman was saying is that we are warming ourselves beside 
uh, the fire in the morning. So we were like, oh, so this is what she was saying. So after that, she, he, he exposed us. We also got his own version of the of the recording so it though it took a lot of time for him to get listen to it understand the story first then we tape recorded him S saying the same thing saying the same thing but obviously not using the same speech sounds so the person was rendering it in the present oka dialect so after that, we already had that. We now wanted to see somebody because we assume that influence, this is not Oka dialect community. So the influence of uh, a strange environment, at least in respect to the language, the dialect. So we now had to look for somebody who had limited contact with other dialect speakers it's not it's not possible to get somebody who has no contact at all so we we sought for somebody who uh, uh, to uh, somebody it's people from the ages of 60 to 70 so uh we we involved we also involved their children their family members to explain to them what help guide them what we want to do they were listening to it they listened to it over and over so they now got to know what uh they were supposed to to do so we now recorded them again we recorded them again and uh, compared with the first one we got here in Ansoka and we found that we were able to now eliminate those ones that don't don't obviously sound like a change so and we retained the ones that we we came to a um, we married them we married them we listened to many of them and we now saw where the direction of change uh, is coming from so uh, after that, we we now had to to sieve out those points of differences and uh, analyze them, uh, and came to a, we now saw clearly where which sound is changing from which to which. So that was what we did. One interesting findings we made is that the. Um, the labialized, uh, voiced, glottal fricative, uh, wo, wo, it's, uh, I may not get it correctly, but it sounds wo, it is, is a kind of H, but it's labialized. It is pronounced with leaves rounding. Was not seen in any of the current recording. That, that's the only sound that was not seen anywhere in any of the current recordings though we we concluded that that is not enough to say that the sound has completely uh, disappeared in the dialect further studies is needed to find out further studies are needed to find out whether it is actually but using the recordings we use they were never there but we we found that uh, the variations were kind of environmental for instance in in the in the Igbo word ahu that demonstrative that ahu you the the what we we heard what we saw in thomas's recording we are Aho, aho. But what we got from the current speakers were sometimes aho and sometimes aho. That is a, having a a, a labialized um, glottal uh, uh, villa freak uh, nasa, a labialized glot villa nasa. That is a, a, a villain like in English, in being liberalized. 
uh, and it also it also features in in the exchange or the replacement between na, na and ngu, uh, the same sound replacing na in bilie. That is the standard. But we say bilie. But what uh, not called recorded was binye, binye. But what we got currently is binye, binye. And uh, another interesting discovery is that the some 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 dialects of Igbo in Anambra, especially Onu Onicha dialect, often use l for. That is the R and the L, R and L. Yeah, that is in orthography. So the where the standard Igbo will have R, they will always pronounce L. So now we listen to Thomas's uh, recordings and we found that that we we have L more in in such recordings for instance olulu but olulu but we are now hearing in some of the speakers oruru instead of olulu oluru instead of olulu so you see that there is influence of other Igbo dialects on the Oka dialect and that could be explained by the kind of uh, um, the rate of migration towards the the community because presently Oka is the capital of Anambra state and uh, I inhabiting uh, one of the most popular um, university in the southeast that is the Namda Zikiwe University Oka so that gave room for people from different parts of the country, parts of the world, and parts of the Igbo land to come to Oka. And each is coming with his or her own dialect or language. So there is now this language contact between the people. And that is resulting to this noticed sound change. And it is, I think, because it is within the same language, the influence is from other dialects of Igbo to this dialect. That is because, that is why we cannot say that is a total change. Because some of the variables, we, some of the va va variations we saw there, we, is something that can be obtained. The ones that is that are replacing the ones we saw in North Coast can also be obtained. There are vari varieties in other dialects, like in Igbo, the word pota that is come out, come out. The standard Igbo will say pota, but some some dialects will say foga. Some will say fota. Some will also say pota. That is the that, the standard one. So. We, we now see that um, uh, uh, what Thomas recorded was Foga. But what we got now is Fota, which is also a variety of the word Fota. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's significant in the sense that it can help. It helps to trace the change that is going on because had it not been for the recordings we wouldn't have noticed the exact nature of the change and the movement the direction of the the change so it helps to to keep rec keep track of the direction of the change because language changes over time and if nothing uh, uh, is, is done to take care of the present situation of a language, you wouldn't know when the change happens or how and from where, which direction the change happens. In a layman's language, let's say that the Igbo language was written with the English symbols. 
because we've we've come to know that for instance let's take the the this the vowel or or is a backgrounded vowel and the english and uh, the Igbo language is a language that has a one-to-one -one correspondence between the phonemes and the letters of the alphabet used in representing the phonemes. We have 36 uh, Igbo phonemes, and we probably have 36 letters of the Igbo alphabet. So wherever you see O, it is represented with a dotted O. Now, because in, in English, for instance, in the word saw, sod, you see that the, the letters that represent the sound that sounds like the Igbo or is AW. Is AW. So because of that, the 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 colonial um, the British that first the foreigners that first studied the Igbo language had to write the Igbo language using trying to to place it side by side with the English language. And that is where why we have something like Oka spelt A W U K K A instead of O K A the way the native the typical Igbo will spell it it will be O K A that is a dotted O K and the A it was in 1961 when the orthography controversy was settled and uh, we now had the, have the the 36 letters.